Hey lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to start with a fresh, clean face that is moisturized and ready to go. And today I want to try and use some color, which is what I'm saying in this clip here with the Morphe 35B palette. But let's see where today's makeup look takes us. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing just yet. To start off with, we're going to prime our eyes and you can use any concealer you have. I like to use the Catrice Camouflage. It's a dupe for the MAC Paint Pots. And I do like a bit of a thicker camouflage because um, I do have quite pigmented eyelids with my veins and whatnot. Anyway, getting back into it, I'm going to take a sellotape. I'm going to be doing this method again today and just put it on the back of my hand just so it's not so sticky. And then just removing it, as you'll see there on the back of the hand, it's a little bit more gentle. You can actually get makeup like tape, but I use sellotape and it works just as well. Then lining it up with your bottom like a lash line to go sort of up into towards the temple i would say place them on both sides of your eyes try and get them obviously as even as you can because it obviously will affect your outcome if one is way way different than the other check in the mirror and you should be good to go after this i am just going to gently dab any excess on the eye i don't want it to crease and then i'm going to set it with a matte eyeshadow Today I'm going to be using my Makeup Geek shadows, but guys, really, anything you have is absolutely fine. Just go in with your transition color first. I'm using Peach Smoothie and Beaches and Cream, and just start working that backwards and forwards, up from the crease onto the little, little bit, right up to the brow bone. Then taking a cool tone, a sort of light brown color, this is Barcelona Beach from Makeup Geek. You're going to just sort of concentrate this just in the crease area and a little bit above. And again, just going back and forth, blending it and a little bit into the corner and onto the lid. Then taking your first blending brush you had for your transition colors, a big fluffy one, we're just going to blend that all together. Going back in, we're going to go in now with Mocha, which is obviously a deeper brown, also still in the cool tone family. We're just going to concentrate this on the outer portion of the eye. You'll see there, I'm using just circular little brush motions to begin with. And then as less of the product is on the brush, I'll slowly start to only blend it only into the middle of the crease. So not all the way to the end, guys, only to the middle. And then taking an even darker chocolate brown. This is from the Inglot Freedom System. We're going to take a small fluffy brush and take a little, little tiny bit, guys. Remember, a little bit of product goes a long way and just build up the intensity. We're then going to really, really now just focus on that outer corner of the eye and blend it a little bit onto the lid and a little bit up into the crease. Then we're going to take the previous brush we used, guys, and we're just going to blend that all together. Next, going to this really light matte color in the same Inglot palette, I'm just going to start packing this sort of on the inner corner and up to the brow just to really open up my eyes so they don't look so closed. Um, I just find this really makes your eyes look so much bigger. Um, I know we even put a lot of color on the inner corner of the eye. I just really like doing this because I really, really find this effect looks so, so good and makes your eyes look really, really big. Going in with gel liner today, I'm going to use number 77 from Inglot. I love this, and I'm going to use two different brushes. I'm going to start with the Inglot angled brush itself, and I'm going to sort of sloppily, sort of black like, um, Morse code, I guess, just sort of try and start the line from the middle of the eye going out, and that's what I really love about this tape method. You can actually really be as sloppy as you want with this, and it's not going to go all over your eye. And then I draw the line, make my little triangle, and then, yep, I will go in with my smaller detailer brush and just clean all of those lines up. After this, I'm just going to put on a few coats of mascara. We're going to leave our lashes all natural today, ladies, for a change. Um, then I'm praying really hard that I've actually done this correctly and both are quite even. The first one coming off looks pretty good. I was quite happy with it. 
The second one had like a little bump or lump at the bottom. It probably could have been that the tape wasn't down flat on my skin and it just went through, but it's not a big deal. Just take a cotton bud, some makeup remover. I like to squish the cotton bud down a bit so it goes a bit flat and you just clean it away. This is really nice to do your eyes before you do your foundation for this exact reason. Any mistakes or just cleaning up any areas around the eye. So after this, we are now going to start with the face. I'm actually going to start with one of my favorite primers I've come to love, which is the e.l.f. Illuminating Primer. This gives you that beautiful like glow under the skin, under your foundation. So I'm just going to massage this into my face as usual, followed by my color correcting, applying my foundation using my Miracle Sponge from Real Techniques. After foundation, we're going to be doing our concealer, guys, under the eyes, the chin, nose, and forehead. Now, I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning when all these different houses started bringing up the mini versions of their little sponges. So, I did get one when I bought that whole kit from Real Techniques in December, and guys, I'm sold. I actually can't live without this thing. It really is so fantastic, especially for a look like this, where you have to be so careful. Near the eye, you've done all this beautiful eye work. You don't want to get any concealer or foundation on it. Also, I'm going in with my Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette to set the under eye, mixing those two lighter colors together just to really brighten and give me that beautiful wide awake look. And then after this, I'm also going to be doing a little bit of, I call it semi-contouring. I'm not really going in very hard. I really have actually enjoyed the way that this looks with my makeup. I pretty much do it almost every time, whether I'm doing a very natural look or I just really love the way it gives my face a little bit more definition. And then using that same Real Techniques macro sponge, I'm going to use that. Guys, these things are really nice. If you want to try them out, I really recommend them. They actually are worth it. After this, um, we're definitely going to be going back in with our powders. So remember, after your liquids, you do your powders. Set the face with any face powder that you use. And now on to the color palette. I decided to go in with this beautiful dark purple. I'm going to be doing the pop of color under my lashes. I believe I have done it on my channel before. I think I did it with a green, if I'm not mistaken, or a blue. But yeah, so I'm only going to go halfway into the eye. Kind of similar concept to what we did on the lid. Only going in halfway with a flat definer brush. And then with no product on my pencil brush, I'm just going to start smoking this out. Then taking the lighter purple color in the palette, I'm going to then blend out that line towards the inner part of my eye now just to make it nice and soft. And then after this, I'm just going to take any black coal eyeliner pencil to line my inner waterline. And then I'm going to set it with a black eyeshadow using a small detailer brush. This ensures that the eyeliner doesn't actually move. It's a really great technique. You can even use it with color liner. And then guys, just fill in your eyebrows with whatever way you prefer to do it. Going back in with our Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette, I'm going to be going over where I had put that liquid contour down earlier, mixing those two colors together that I showed you. Taking my bronzer, my favorite one, which is Hula Bronzer by Benefit, I'm now just going to warm up the rest of my face. Now time for blush. I'm just going to mix those three sort of curly neutral colors together. I don't know why it looked very pink on camera. And then I'm going to use a very loose brush today because I really want it to be more airbrushed and more softer kind of look for my blush. After blush, we're going to highlight the high points of our face, cheekbones, top of the cupid's bow and the nose. And then after that, we're going to highlight the inner corner of our eye as well as the inner corner of the eyebrow before the arch. In the corner of the eye makes the eyes look bigger and the eyebrow actually makes it look a bit higher your arch than it actually is. To finish off, we're going to blend all of that beautiful bronzer, blush, highlighter together so we have seamless lines. 
and then we're going to clean our lips with a baby wipe and put on some lip balm before we do our lips get a chance for it to soak in so we don't have any dryness and then we are going to set our face with whatever spray you guys have just to settle all the powder we've put on our face lovelies um i went back to an old technique that i used to do on my channel quite a while ago which is with the sellotape and i used gel liner instead of my liquid and i did a few different things today i really hope you enjoyed it guys if you did please give this video a thumbs up leave a comment you can find me on facebook instagram and twitter and i'll catch you on the next video ciao ciao bye